Hello everybody, my name is Roberto Cifuentes and I'm doing this interview, video interview. I am from Chile, I am an English teacher, I have been teaching English for almost 15 years. Five of, uh, f uh, out of those almost 15 years have been online, so here we go, I'm going to answer some questions. What is your favorite thing about being a teacher? Um, a lot of things, but basically my favorite thing about being a teacher is the opportunity that you have to interact with so many different people and and learn about so many different backgrounds uh, when you have, uh, in this case, students from other countries, you have the opportunity to learn about different cultures and things like that. So I would say that is one of my favorite things about being a teacher. And the other thing is like, on the back of your head, you always have this... Um, idea that you're making a contribution regardless of the type of student that you have so yeah it's kind of basically that what is challenging about being a teacher what is challenging about being a teacher is like everything pretty much everything but i would say that is finding the balance between having a relaxing class or a fun class uh and uh that are going to align with the objectives that you have to uh, meet in this case. So finding that balance between having a class that is not like boring and at the same time like uh, significant in terms of, uh, for example, grammar, focal points, yeah, is a difficult part. What do you think is challenging about learning a new language? Um, basically, the feeling that you are not progressing and that you have this fear of of not knowing like and when you're in a group for example that you you have the I'm, I'm currently in learning German and is that feeling that everybody else is doing well but but you so is that and the fact that you have to overcome that fear of producing so yeah I would say that that is the challenging thing by the way i'm listening to the beatles the beatles in the background free as a bird and the beatles is my all-time favorite band so there you go can you tell us about a time you made a mistake with a student i can't recall a specific time but i can recall like especially in my first year um a certain methodologies that i have changed uh throughout my career for example yeah especially my first year i used to push students to to produce to talk which in hindsight and looking back is it wasn't the best move wasn't the best methodology like pushing someone to to forcing someone to talk uh, in front of a class for example yeah it wasn't the best so of course i have adjusted that uh, now and you you welcome them uh, you welcome them to to speak like so I always ask, like, do you want to speak? Uh, of course they're going to speak, uh, but they feel not forced. They feel like, okay, I'm doing this willingly. The, the teacher is not, like, putting me on the spot. So, yeah, it's not a particular occasion that I can recall, but it's things like that. What is your perspective on error correction in the classroom? Well, actually, this can be tied uh, to question number four. My perspective on error correction is that you let the students produce. Uh, the more they produce, uh, the the better they they are going to be. And I always tell them like like look, guys, the the, the objective of a of learning an, a a new language in this case English is not to have a perfect English because nobody has that. Not even natives. Um, the idea basically is like you learn the language. Uh, well enough in order to recognize when you make a mistake and that's it we do it all the time in spanish for example sometimes you you conjugate a verb incorrectly and you say like well okay so you correct yourself because you know the language that's it uh, so is that and the other thing again it can be tied to question number four uh because at the beginning of my career of oh, again i i used to correct them on the fly i used to correct students on the fly like while they were producing and it was very interrupting it was not a good methodology so now i let them finish whatever the activity is and then i correct them or sometimes i i encourage them to correct themselves i have this little trick 
that sometimes I, I would say something incorrectly or I would write something incorrectly on purpose so students can be like, teacher, you, you made a mistake there. And I go, I would go like, oh, yeah, sorry, I was thinking about something else. It's something like that. What could you do if a student seems nervous or untalkative? Again, trying to lower the, 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 the anxiety levels and, and trying to make them feel like welcomed and there is no pressure. Uh, I don't have a particular like technique. It depends on the student. But it's usually making a small talk, sometimes games, if we're talking about kids. Uh, sometimes games work with adults too, but it's usually making a small talk, uh, depending on the level of, of the students, of course, uh, but it usually works, like trying to make them feel like, like hey, relax, it's just English, it's, there's nothing to it. Is company culture important to you? Why or why not? It is important. I don't know if you're talking about like multicultural companies like in the sense that you have colleagues from different countries and things like that but uh, in terms of company culture goes yes it is it is really important like you have to have a good environment uh, working environment um, so you can feel comfortable <laughs> working with 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 other people uh, so yes it's really important it's really important so far I have been lucky so all the companies I've been there have been really nice really good so it's it is important and finally what do you want to know more about craving english nothing in particular because your ad was really straightforward uh, you guys uh, explained very well what you're about <clears throat> what you do the only thing maybe it would be like like are you more inclined to have uh, to have a, a native speaker as a, as a teacher because i obviously i'm not a native speaker i'm from chile but other than that, it's, it's no nothing, nothing more. Again, I I did some digging, and your company is, it seems like very serious, very uh, very focused on 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 your your objectives. And the other thing is like, do you have any problems for uh, for example for uh, having a teacher like me in this case? Like could be anyone, but but from another country because I again I have experience in in time zone difference uh, differences so. Uh, but other than that, is there is nothing I would really would like to know about Craven English. So we're fine. So thank you. There is my presentation. So looking forward to hearing from you guys and 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 maybe we can work together. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.